your body, the way you look, everything. It's you're the the final product. What film always makes you happy and why? What film always makes me happy? Master and Commander. It was a film, I think, uh, I don't know, I think it was made about 10 years ago, Russell Crowe, Paul Bettany. Um, and it's all about the Napoleonic Wars out at sea. Um, I've watched it about 25 times, one of my favourite wow. films. Um, it always makes me happy. I love the yeah. soundtrack and the life at sea. Yeah. And the relationship between uh, Paul Bettany and Russell Crowe's character, uh -huh. um, between two men, you don't often see that often. They're like an old married couple. Yeah. So, I, yeah, that film. At what moment did you decide to be an actor, would you say? Was it an instant moment or...? Well, my brother, my younger brother's a ballet dancer and he wanted to do that from a young age and I sort of went along with him um, to do that yeah. and was quickly proved to not be very good at dancing at all and was sort of pushed towards the narrating yeah. of the ballet shows. Okay. So um, that's probably where it first came yeah. from. Um, and I think I just realised that uh, it's actually quite a lazy thing. I think I realised it's what I could do. So I thought, um, I'll do that mm -hmm. and try and do it. And I think um, it's always quite a good thing. It's very easy to work out what you want to do, I think, and what yeah. you'd love to be. Um, it's, it's a little bit harder to work out what you can do. So it was just great that what I could do or what I thought I could do ended up being what I love to do as well. Yeah. Have you done any dancing since? Any improvement? Not professional dancing, no, just sort of on my own. Yeah. Um, for sort of very small audiences. <laughs> no. um, I haven't done a lot of dancing since. Um, I was always told that I'm not a very good dancer, but I'm a very good mover. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I think that, that's more natural yeah. talent. I guess people always think movement has to be a big contemporary dance piece, but it doesn't. It's just about no. how you carry yourself. It's about a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> what would you feel is your highest achievement to date? Keeping working, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. really is, is, is the highest achievement. Yeah. And being able to choose what I work, what, yeah. in what film or thing I do, that's probably, that really is my favourite thing that I've ever achieved. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all I've wanted to sort of really achieve in terms of acting is to be given the choice because you spend a lot of your career and some people spend their entire career not being able to choose. So I think when you achieve that, I think you're really um, very lucky and it's sort of hard work's paid off. So that's probably what I'm most proud of, yeah. Would you then say that you prefer to be in true stories as opposed to fictional? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I do prefer to be in true stories just because um, I'm obsessed with history. Yeah. Which is, it's sort of my hobby. Yeah. Um, whenever like, I'm not working, I'm just driving around trying to visit castles or places, yeah. you know, old places. Yeah. Um, so to get to do a role that is sort of rooted in, in fact and history is always great because it's just another excuse to read up on stuff and, and, yeah. and learn about someone. Um, so yeah, I do prefer doing that, yeah. Do you think you'll continue to kind of focus on that as you go further into your career? No, not particularly. I, I mean, it, if something comes up that has just got brilliant people attached to mm -hmm. it or people that I've always wanted to work with, I, I don't really mind if it's complete fiction or, or rooted in, in, in history. But, um, you know, I've, I've, I've certainly done more um, truth, uh, true stories than, than fictional, but when I've done fictional, I've, I've loved them for different reasons because you, there's just a lot more license. Yeah. And there's not someone saying, you know, no, he wouldn't he sit like that because it's in the 1500s, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. What actors would you say that you've enjoyed working with in the past? Oh, um, I, what, uh, Leslie Manville. I loved working with her. I did a play with her in London about three, four years ago. Um, and she's one of my favourite actors. Uh, working with... Um, Tom Hardy, I've worked with him twice now, um, and watching him work in the way he works is just as fascinating as mm -hmm. what he does on camera. Um, um, a lot of British actors, I've worked with some Americans, but a lot of British actors I've loved working with because there's a thing with British actors that I think less of them take themselves as seriously 
and it's quite fun. Yeah. They tend to like make it a lot more fun. Yeah. Americans are phenomenal actors, but a lot of them seem to take it a lot more seriously. Um, so a lot of British actors, you know, I've worked with uh, Mark Rylance, Irish actors like Killian Murphy. You know, these guys, you know, they're they're, they're fantastic. And um, but my favourite actor I've worked with recently is uh, Fiona Shaw, Irish actor, um, who is g gifted. She's just phenomenal. So yeah, I've been spoiled, I've been lucky. Is there any other job that you'd consider doing on set, apart from acting? Uh, directing, mm -hmm. um, 100%, like I've always wanted to do it and I'm working towards doing mm -hmm. that. And um, Whilst I've enjoyed acting, I've always done acting with one eye on what I can learn yeah. towards becoming a director. Um, because while acting's fun, it's very sporadic and it's momentary and mm -hmm. you, sometimes you act for 45 seconds a day. Whereas with a director, you're constantly busy and you have to know a lot more about loads of different aspects. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very restless person, so I like being busy. And I'm not, you're not always busy as an actor. Is it more like, uh, do you feel it's a bigger project to be a director? Yeah. yeah. I like the fact that you, I think as an actor, you're, the, the, the focus is so much on yourself mm -hmm. and how you know, you portray a character, what you know about a character, it's so focused on you and you, you, you know, your body, the way you look, everything, it's, you're the, the final product. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I quite like with the director, the other way around, is that you can stand back and see your work, you know, just like somebody that makes a table or does accounts, they can remove themselves from yeah. their work, whereas an actor, you are your work. And um, I think you do have to be a certain amount of, um, not self-obsessed, but you have to, be able um, to watch yourself. Yes, you have to, you know, and, and um, you have to be very proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah. uh, or, or, or able to just switch that on and off. So uh -huh. directing would be, yeah, my ultimate aim, yeah. What is the most bizarre thing that's ever happened on set? The most bizarre thing that's ever happened on set? Um, so what, one of them would be in, I did a film called Dunkirk and I played an RAF pilot. And one of the weirdest things that happened was we shot the interiors in the cockpits of the Spitfire. So um, we did the normal shots where I was actually lucky enough to go up in the air in a Spitfire with two other Spitfires flying next to me with a camera on the wing. And we were swooping and duping over the channel. Yeah. That was insane. Yeah. But the, the, the bizarre aspect of that was then when you put the camera inside the cockpit, you had to have it on the ground on a gimbal. Um, and my plane ends up in the water. So we had like a little cockpit in the swimming pool in LA. And then um, the weirdest moment was having the director of the film, Chris Nolan, sat astride this cockpit in a pool and me sat in the cockpit yeah. and him holding the, the latch because I've got to try and bang out yeah. and him sat holding the latch um, and me sort of acting with Chris Nolan sat right there across my uh, cockpit was uh, absolutely mental. Yeah. Because you're on your own in the plane for a lot of that film, mm. did it feel quite different because you didn't really have another actor to bounce off of or because Christopher Nolan was right above you? Did it No, that's, feel... a, that's actually a brilliant question is that particularly in film, um, you know, when I went to drama school and when you do stage work and stuff like that, the focus is so on yeah. as an actor, like how you interact and with, with the other actor and you know, it's what you get back from the other actor and all that kind of stuff. But so often in film, you're asked to, because of technical things, you're asked to, you know, act with a tennis ball or act with, you know, a mm -hmm. wall, or you really have to use your imagination mm -hmm. as a film actor. You know, and um, there was times on that where I think even because of quite often the, you know, film is, is dictated to by where the camera can go, which is really annoying, but that's the reality of film. And we had these big IMAX cameras and I was on a boat and I couldn't, I had to hold the side of the boat, but the camera had to be there. So I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But then I, so I had to literally mime, I had to put my hands like this and mime going across the side of the boat yeah. because the camera didn't fit. So yeah, your imagination is really, uh -huh. really relied on as a film yeah. actor. Yeah. What is the first thing that you do when you come back home from making a film? Start thinking, did I do a good job? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the first thing. And um, uh, I don't know, I just sort of probably go and watch football and just try and um, 
shake the film off mm -hmm. if it's been tough or, or you know, uh, you know, I've done films where I've done like three, four weeks of night shooting and that takes its toll on your body and no, I just try and relax, I guess, and then start looking for the next one. Do you feel like there's quite short breaks between the films you do or do you think it's long enough to kind of recharge before you're ready? I mean, it, it, it totally depends on, on, on your luck and sort of circumstance, but you know, this, this year example, I, I finished a job in August and I haven't done another one since then. Okay. You know, the, everything I'm going to do happens after New Year, so it's going to be about five or six months, yeah. which um, I think when I was younger would have driven me mental and sort of terrified me in that, you know, I've got to be working. But like I say, you know, I've been fortunate enough to get to a position where I can choose and I've also found ways of, of applying myself in other aspects of mm -hmm. film or, or in the industry and you know I've started a production company, I produced a film this year, yeah. I've written a short, all this kind of stuff so um, I've really been enjoying the space and the, 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 the sort of longer run-ups that you get to a job um, but saying that I think if you've got too long to think about a job, too long to think about a character it can sometimes be detrimental and it's, it's a lot better to just jump straight in. Right, I'm going to ask you some quick fire Sweet. questions. So run off a few of the films that you've been in and your best memory from it. Okay. Good. Right, cool. Go on. Go on. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots. My best memory from yeah. it? Yeah. Three of my best friends were in that film. Mm -hmm. That was probably the coolest thing. Yeah. That was mad. Dunkirk. Yeah, flying around with Spitfires was probably cool. Calibre. Shh, oh God. Completing that film was probably my because that was a tough film to shoot. Yeah. And Corvidy, the one that you produced recently. Uh, Hope I'm pronouncing that. That's right. right. <laughs> my God, that was good. Good. Nobody can do that. Well, uh, maybe it's Scottish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, producing the film was my favourite thing. Yeah. And com again, completing that. You know, the, the, I think you're fortunate enough to complete a film is, is probably the best thing. Is there a cause that's close to your heart? Local is a big thing for me. I grew up in the borders and. Um, I think uh, focus on local, you know, in, in the day and age that we live in now, you know, especially with things like social media, it's very easy to get caught up in the sort of big international or national mm -hmm. causes and while they're incredibly important, um, I, I find it's very easy to get sucked in there and not, everybody's um, thinking can get drawn straight into that and sort of forget what's around them and I think you know, uh, an argument to, to, to be way more effective is to try and work on in a local aspect as much as possible, whether that's in film, like in the film, in film clubs in schools and things like that, or, you know, mini buses for schools or mini buses for, for nursing homes that live in your local area and or supporting local businesses, yeah. supporting, you know, uh, the more, the older I've gotten, the more I've sort of pulled myself away from big world issues and more towards things that, I think if, if individuals actually took the time to just think locally, you would see results and changes uh, a lot quicker, you know, which, um, which I've, I've been trying to do and, you know, I get that from my dad. My dad was always big on that, you know, just trying to, you know, like I said, like I've, I've grown up watching and supporting junior semi-pro football, for example, as well as um, youth theatres and amateur operatics where I grew up. It's just, it's a lot more instant. Yeah. if you can think locally, yeah. so yeah. Thank you. And last question is the best advice you've been given and by who? My dad actually gave me a brilliant piece of advice. He said that, you know, never, um, to, ne to never just assume that the person above you knows better than you, um, which I've always loved. So it's it, it sort of, to me, that just sort of says that, you know, respect is earned and just because somebody is in a certain position mm -hmm. or has something, you might know better than them. You yeah. might have a better idea. And I think I love it for it's, it makes you challenge things and question things a lot more than just accepting just because someone's in a certain position. Um, and, and, and to just never, I don't think you can go far wrong thinking that you're never wrong. It sounds an arrogant thing to say, but I wish I started thinking that yeah. when I was younger. Um, but if you start a position of thinking I know nothing and I'm wrong all the time and people know better than me, I think it stops you, it makes you more polite, but it stops you from actually poking and prodding mm -hmm. further 
So I think if you can, from a young age, think, nah, I'm just right. Yeah. I think I think you can do a lot more uh, damage. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks very much. No, thank you. And uh, you're becoming an Interfilm ambassador. Yes, I am. Great. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. Very excited. <laughs> I never thought I'd be an ambassador for yeah. anything. So, no, very excited. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>